Dear Jess, this coastal path up from Rosas in the very northeastern corner of Catalonia in Spain is hard going, but definitely the best way into the picturesque town of Cadaqués. And as usual on Pete's Pans, the windy track enters the town through the back door. This is the Cap de Creus, one of the most scenic and well-preserved strips of the Costa Brava, and the neighboring fishing village of Portigat is where Salvador Dali made his home. Greetings. 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 And when the sun rises on mainland Spain, it lights up these houses before any others. The eccentric Dali was an enthusiastic gastronome and he cited the seafood dishes along this stretch of coast as the most divine of all Spain. He also likened Jesus Christ to cheese and surrealist artists to caviar. He declared, if I hate that detestable degrading vegetable called spinach, it's because it's shapeless like liberty. I only like to eat what has a clear and intelligible form. The opposite of shapeless spinach is armor. I love eating suits of arms. In fact, I love eating all shellfish because only a battle to peel makes it vulnerable to the conquest of our palate. So I set up kitchen on the same rugged volcanic rocks that provide the setting for so many of Dali's paintings to prepare a very special paella known in Spain as a paella de marisco, a seafood paella, packed with all this tremendously fresh catch that I picked up at the market in nearby Rosas. Now here are the precise ingredients for the seafood paella used in these parts. A complete list with exact amounts, as well as links for acquiring some of the trickier Spanish ingredients, can be found in the video description below. Here we have the extremely Dalinian heads of a couple of small monkfish. These are used for the stock, this crucial flavor base for the paella. Any white fish heads and carcasses will be fine. Or if you're in these parts, a small little selection of Mediterranean rockfish known as moraya will be perfect too. Over here are the small clams, which are probably best soaked in salted water for a couple of hours in order for them to release any grit or sand that they contain. The clean mussels, a sepia, cuttlefish, failing which a calamar squid is also quite authentic. These are the thialas, known in English as longustine or Dublin Bay prawns. If you can't find these, extra prawns will do the job perfectly. For the vegetable flavor base, we'll use onions, garlic, red and green pepper, and tomatoes. For extra Spanish flavoring, Spanish paprika, known as pimenton, salt, saffron, and a little chopped parsley, a bay leaf, and lemon wedges to serve. This tremendous Rioja red goes in the cook, not in the paella. The first step then is to make a flavorful stock base. Remove the heads from nine of the prawns and peel the shells from the bodies, leaving three prawns untouched, intact. These three will be used whole and served as decoration for the paella. In a very generous puddle of olive oil, gently fry three or four cloves of garlic, roughly chopped. Once these are just starting to take on a little color, add all the shells and heads from the prawns and stir around until these start to take on a little color. Now the sliced onion is added and a few sprigs of parsley. Keep stirring until the onion softens. Now add the fish heads and cover the lot with water. Pop in a bay leaf and leave to simmer gently for half an hour or so. Strain and keep hot so it's ready to add to the rice when the time comes. As the stock cooks, you can get on with starting the paella itself. In another very generous slug of oil, fry the whole prawns and the peeled prawn bodies along with the cigalas. Season with salt and turn them over when golden.
Remove the whole lot, and in this tremendously flavorful oil, steadily brown the cuttlefish, and set this aside as well. The diced onions and peppers go in next. A little seasoning, and let this all soften gently, patiently, for a good 10 minutes or so. Now chopped garlic goes in, and is cooked for a little while longer. Grate the tomatoes in this manner and pour the juicy pulp on top of the vegetables and really let this reduce down until it's almost dry. At this point the previously fried bits of squid and the prawn bodies, but not the whole ones, are added to the pan and stirred over a decent flame. Add a teaspoon of both paprika and saffron and stir around for a few seconds. Add the rice, 100 grams per person is the usual amount, and give it all a good stir in order to slightly toast the rice. The flavorful stock is poured over and is brought to a fierce boil. As it cooks, check the broth for seasoning, and after about 10 minutes, turn the heat down to a much gentler boil. Arrange the clams, mussels and whole prawns, embedding the clams and mussels deeply into the rice so that they'll cook and open up as the rice continues to cook for a further 7 to 10 minutes. By this time the rice will have absorbed most of the stock and will be cooked, yet still maintaining a little bite right in the centre of the grain. Very important in Spanish rice cookery is to cover the dish with a towel or a newspaper just to allow the last bit of stock to be absorbed without allowing the rice to overcook. Having managed to cook my way through this summer thunderstorm, I'm rewarded with this lovely sight as a backdrop to this perfectly executed and completely genuine Dalinian seafood paella. Each guest squeezes on some lemon as much as they fancy. And I head back to Cadaqués for I'm not quite sure what as a dessert. <laughs>